So, um, who saw that coming? The ending. Yeah. The Thin Juice team taking on the Good Brothers for the Impact World Tag Team titles at Sacrifice. Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. Because, you know, I have to make a reference right there somewhere. And this is one for the ages, everyone. Finn Juice were the team that was contacted, that New Japan Pro Wrestling was like, okay, we're going to send you over there to Simpack Wrestling. We're opening the Forbidden Door for them. It's part of our new deal that we've been actually working on since last year because we didn't work with AEW at the time. And, but we're ready, we're going to take this, we're going to run with it, and we're going to send our ambassadors because we want the good brothers on our show. But then the pandemic happened, but we're going to try and ease the tension. So, yeah, the Finn Juice team was the basically the ambassadors coming in to be the field feelers for, hey, let's see if this works and everything. And this lead into their build-up matches, a build out to ooh, the Good Brothers taking on the Finn Juice. It was because, of course. And, yeah, the Good Brothers have been busy with a ton of other stuff. They've been helping the Young Bucks and then trying to betray them. Then help them again. Then they were helping Kenny Omega with the worst botch ending ever. Except that it's not as bad as All Out's botch. Because people want to make that comparison of near death to... A production company screwing up AEW with its explosions. Because that makes sense. And then... And then... You have Finn Juice ranking up wins left and right. Building up tension with the Good Brothers for their match. Sorry about but my eye. It's just... It's spring. So yeah, I probably look sickly. Because it's spring. The worst season of my life. It's allergy season, damn it. I'm not going to take this. I'm going to go out there and kill spring itself. I'm like if, you know, if I was God. Anyways, so this would lead to a confrontation after a colossal eight-man tag team match. And by colossal, I mean literally because these t talents were massive. Stiff in both size and, and weight. Especially the latter team. I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of stunning. So, the Good Brothers got got the challenge laid out, and they were going all... Like, they were first being friendly with them, but, you know, that's all part of this false sense of security, probably. Then they go all and tell you that Finn Juice is beneath them, and saying, how about you be young lions and carry our belts for us? And I was like, yeah, that is kind of true. They do that back in Japan. In fact, Japan's teaching system is much more destructively insane than WWE's or AEW's for what it looks like. But that's a different matter. But, yeah, Finn Juice and got the opportunity to take on the Good Brothers. And I was thinking, no, that's probably not going to happen. They're, they're not going to take the titles. So, yeah, I was like, there's no way, like, like, I know this is a shared universe attempt and everything. Like, restore the shared universe and bring back the wrestling stuff. But there's, like, some things you were like, and I don't know if they would actually do that, though. Because, well, it, it's just weird. Because it, it, you can't imagine. You, you can't imagine this whole idea where the Good Brothers were going to go ahead and lose the titles to... To Carl, to the Fid Juice team, and yeah. So let's get into the match. Now the match was to standard tag team stuff. So basically, the greatest tag team of all time when WWE compares it nowadays. But it's pretty basic. It's not like spectacular or anything. I at least I found it. Like I was thinking to myself, man. Like I like these homages. Homages to. The old class school tag team, and I did like the ending, how they won. Uh, Finn Juice going ahead and honoring tag team wrestling, and the wrestlers being smarter than how they would usually be booked somewhere else. Like how tag teams were like, like okay, we got this guy down, we got the other guy, let's just ignore the other guy, not knock him down, and then take that guy down and get the victory. Yeah, I, I don't know why people, why, like the games did this more than WWE did in recent times, and then the revival came in. 
But yeah, so the this match was pretty standard for me. He but it it was kicked into high gear in the last last part of this three act story, and David Finley was was awesome in this. How do I explain this? They win. Finn Juice with the Legion of Doom Doomsday device finisher. Finn Juice go for the cover, and they win. They take down Luke Gallows out into the bat, out into the into the uh, floor, and take down Carl Anderson and get the victory over him, and they win the tag team titles. And it was like, um. I'm not an expert or anything, but I think this is supposed to mean something more. So, yeah. New Japan Pro Wrestling just acquired the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Belts. And as to this week on Impact, they are now scheduling to be gone for a month and are heading all the way back to Japan for their, for their New Japan Pro Wrestling Cups and other promises they have. Uh, subsequently meaning that the titles will be gone for a while, so... Yeah, this is the thing I, I was wondering. So, like, I talked with this with somebody who's a huge Impact fan who's not excited about what's going to happen with Kenny Omega and Rich Swan on by the spoilers on Sacrifice's main event where Rebellion's going to have Kenny Omega taking on Rich Swan for title for title. And it's like, yeah, we're kind of in this conundrum. Because it's like, you don't want the Impact World title to be gone for God knows how long. Because he's not going to wrestle all the time in Impact Wrestling. He's obligated to AEW more. But you also were like, you can't have the World titles lose. And this could give the company more exposure than they had in years. More so. Like, they have been having some declining viewership. But, like, if they have Kenny Omega, they could probably get something out of this. Especially since Kenny Omega is a little bit more mainstream I mean, like, their biggest mainstream star was Sammy Callahan and Tessa Blanchard. One was crazy and too hardcore for the mainstream audience. Tessa Blanchard was, could have been perfect, but then she was revealed to be a complete psycho in the ethics department. I really am wondering how that's going to work if she signs for AEW somehow. Like, I, I already gave my thoughts on that whole Tessa, what if Tessa joined the AEW stuff. But, but yeah, it was like, yeah, like, the last time I felt like they had a big mainstream star that gave them a lot of attention was when it was TNA back in the day. Then everything kind of just fell off because Hogan and Bishop wanted to run rough shot over everybody, and Dixie Carr was kind of mismanaging everything. Yeah. So, yeah, would Kenny being world champ be both good and bad? Yeah, because, in fact, this is... So, I feel like the, the Good Brothers, are, like, uh, this is my guess. The Good Brothers losing the titles to Finn Juice is more like a a, a testing of, of, of sorts. You know, to have, to see, hey, what would fit, happen if Finn Juice won the titles, and they go ahead and run with it for a little bit. You give it a month or so, see how it goes for the roster and how it goes for morale to have their titles just not be on the show for some reason. And we cut bring it back and decide ultimately. Like, after that, then they could decide, hey, okay, Kenny Omega, does he win the belt, or, does he, or do we do something to fix this? Because there's apparently a report that there's a conflict between management's because Impact was like, we want our champion, regardless if the guy wrestles or not, to be on Impact every week. We want our world champion, regardless if he wrestles, but at least cuts promos, to show up every week. Tony Khan is also the old school mentality of, well, I don't want my world champion to lose until he loses the belt. And I already called Hangman to do that, because it's obvious Hangman's the next champ. Full circle, everyone. All out 2019. The po the the poster banner is still on Kenny, is Kenny Omega's uh, Twitter account. But yeah, uh, yeah, it, it would be it it would be interesting to see this work. 
it would be interesting if they make this work. It will have to depend on the timing, the locations, and everything. But Fin Juice is set to go back to Japan, and and there are reports, and there was something on Impact Wrestling tonight where they said a couple of their top performers are considering getting basis deals in Japan. Oh boy, I wonder what that could mean. With the forbidden door broken down between Impact and New Japan and New Japan and AEW, and I was like, oh, well, we can have anyone show up. Okada could show up on Impact, even though the chances of that are probably low, even if it's, but it's a lot more possible than it was 10 years ago. And then you could have, have, have Kenny Omega show up on New Japan Pro Wrestling Television. Oh, maybe you could have, have, uh, the, their rich swan show up on AEW and kick Kenny Omega's behind while we build to that title for title match because it, I, I agreed with one of my buddies. Impact really needs to get some win in this. Like, I'm not saying they should win the title, AEW's world title, but like, they really need a win in this storyline because so far, AEW has routinely kicked their behinds. Yeah. Eesh. Sorry if my voice sounds all off and if I feel all off. Like I said, it's allergy season. It's just, but I keep trying to see if I can make content. I'm not like sick, sick. Like I'll be in bed all day and I can't make videos. Luckily, I kept a schedule intact as much as I can, so uh, I'll be off by tomorrow. But we'll have to, so I get to relax on that. But this was a pretty standard good tag to good tag team matchup. It wasn't like this massive spectacular stuff. It's all it's mostly the ending that everyone's talking about. Ironic, isn't it? Where it's like We'll have to see how this works because this could affect AEW and Impact's world title match co collaboration in that rebellion. I'm still surprised they haven't like I'm surprised they haven't like I'm trying to remember. I'm surprised like Kenny Omega has not responded about this. I'm a little surprised about that. But, yeah. And, last but not least, it's like, with the Impact Tag Title showing up on New Japan Pro Wrestling TV with the potential, it's like, whoa, what if Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa are like, hey, uh, those are Knight's nice belts over there. Uh, we dominate the tag teams here. You want to fight the Good Brothers because they keep calling us out. Uh, how about you give us a little bit of the belt uh, and we get to run with it and, and, and potentially kick the good brothers behind and bait up good brothers and all that. So yeah, Impact Wrestling Sacrifice had presented the Impact World Tag Team Tile Match between Finn Juice and the Good Brothers. It was okay to good at times. The last act was really the surprising and how good it was at the end, I felt. And we'll have to see how this testing run goes for the reign as champions since the Good Brothers had a 120-day reign. Man, it feels a lifetime ago, honestly. I kept thinking, like, wait, has it been 365 days or just 120 days? It feels like forever because the pandemic has completely slowed down our lives. Damn you, Carl. Well, those are my collective thoughts on this. This was Neo Reality Entertainment presenting the Wrestleverse of the Finn Juice versus the Good Brothers for the Impact World Tag Team titles at Impact Wrestling Sacrifice. If you like, comment, subscribe, check out our content in the description below if you want to check out more of my content on Pop Culture on Diversa and uh, Wrestleverse. And still no update on Neo Reality Collective. I still got to plan things out on that. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you next time. Peace and take care.